Just right, hi, welcome back. Um, we were not planning on making an episode this week, but here we are, and it's for a very, very good reason too. So again, my name is Coach Nigel from uh, from Black Frog Sheeran, and beside me is my tag team partner, Coach Christoph Nye, who recently resigned as head coach of Aran Celarosha. How are you doing, man? I'm fine. How are you? Good, good, good. So, how did the team take the fact that you resigned? Well, <laughs> I mean, I guess they were very happy. At least that's what they told me, yeah? and uh, what they what uh, what was my feeling that they wanted. So, um, I mean, it was exciting to 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 extend and to 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 continue the way. And we have some some tasks before us for this this season, and then uh, hopefully build something even better for next year. Well, I think it was so well deserved. Uh, you guys, you ran a really, really good season. Um, and it's not over by a long shot. And, you know, uh, kudos and congratulations to you, man. You, it was a well deserved, um, well deserved extension. And I uh, wish you all the best. But before, I mean, today we're not going to talk about the men's team or the men's league. Today we're going to talk about the women's league and one of the bright, let's say, shining stars of, of the women's league here in Luxembourg. Yeah, I'm, I'm very excited for this episode because uh, we talked with was a player that uh, I followed for for a long time. Uh, she's one of the the marquee names in our league, and uh, from what I was told, she's also a very interesting uh, conversation partner. So we go we're gonna see what she has to tell us. All right. So without any further ado, we bring on um, Steinsel's number ten, none other than Esmeralda Skriel. Hi, Esmeralda. How are you doing today? Hi, guys. I'm good. Thank you. How are you? Uh, we're fine. I had some technical difficulties a little bit earlier, but uh, hopefully that was the last part of it. Okay. Oh, well, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, that was a great finish to the, regular, to the regular season that you, got, you ladies had. You know, that was a great come from behind win. You were down 19 points at halftime. And then watching the game, it was like, wow. You guys, you lace clawed back, made it a four point, um, four point or six point uh, differential to start the fourth, and then we went into overtime. But before we go and talk about um, before that game and what how it impacted what's going to happen moving forward, I want to go back a little bit to how you started you know, basketball. So yeah, actually, uh, I grew up in a commune where there. Um, Game was like um, handball because I really love handball. And so my mom was like, okay, um, do you want to try basketball or volleyball? And I was like, nah, I don't know. I'm not sure. Like, I don't know these sports. Like, I prefer handball. Like, this really was the sports I want to do. So then I was like, okay, I'm going to go to one practice in Bertrand. So um, I went there and actually after the per first practice, the coach was like, I want to keep you here. I, I see you have some skills and I want to keep you uh, in basketball and I want you to come to the next practice so we can do also your license and everything. And I was really surprised it came so fast and actually from practice to practice, that's how I grew and actually the love came, that came this way um, for basketball. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, do you, uh, you chose number 10, right? I mean, that, that's the number you're wearing right now. Has that always been your number um, since you started? Yeah, actually, I started with five because 10 was always occupied, but 10 was all, always the number I want to have. And then I also had number seven. And actually, these numbers are always related to my birthday because um, I'm born on the 28th July. And actually, seven was for the month and 28 is um, for 10 because two plus eight is 10. And, and I just feel something personal with this number. And number 10 for me always was a big number that mm -hmm. big players had. And Kobe Bryant had it um, in the national team, and he's my idol. I really like to watch him, and this was a number I always want to have, and I'm really happy to have it. Yeah, let's let's go to to the, to the season right now, and uh, I mean, um, it was a season where I mean, you, you said in a preseason interview on the FOV website that there are like six or seven teams that are more or less on the same level. And, um, well, it was a, a very close uh, end of the regular season where, where you finally got, got that spot in the playoffs. So what was the, what was the attitude of, of your team before going into that decisive game against Ash? 
Well, um, actually, um, the mindset was super great because we didn't have anything to lose. And I think we knew that we were working on a project for the young ones to build them, to give them experience, to grow as, um, as like women to be on the court and be experienced players. And um, not, only, not only as a player on the court, but also off the court to know to take decisions, responsibility. It's, it was something that we were working on um, during the whole um, season and preseason. And I think the moment that came there that we knew that it's about do or die game, it was like, okay, we have really to fight and we didn't work for nothing um, for all this. And we knew that our chances were 50-50. You go in a game like this and, you know, you don't have anything to lose. So, um, yeah, uh, losing by 20 um, uh, in the halftime is really tough. But you, as a basketball player, you have to know that in a couple of minutes, a, a game can change. And um, you always know that your opponent can't play for 40 minutes like Ash did in the first 20 minutes. Like they really made every single basket, every, 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 everything worked well for them. And uh, we knew that if we put some aggressivity on them, on their players, that we can really um, quickly change the game. And I think the fact of um, having a stop and moving forward, having a stop and having a basket, that made us um, give it, that gave us actually confidence to move forward, and we knew that it was so close, so close to to reach them. And in, in ten minutes, we we made it actually to come so close. And I think um, it's 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 very important to say that our young players um, that have uh, played with us the last four years know these situations, know how to handle them, and um, we were able to put them on the court and the new ones um, to give them more responsibility. And like it's a do or die game, they knew they got to fight the whole game. And we, we, put, we put everybody on, the, on a good spot, on a good scene to create great shots and opportunities. And I think that was the, the main point um, during this game um, to go and to, to, to stay positive during the whole game, even if it was a tough time um, in the half court, in the half time. But still, um, like I said, it's it's uh, if you have um, players that have to be leaders, and if the leader is positive, and giving some good advice to the teammates, I think that's the right way you can work on. Coach Derry uh, mentioned in the recent interview that even down 19 at halftime, in the locker room, he knew that you you were go you were going to be able to claw back and 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 get that lead down. And at the start of the third quarter, there was quite a sequence there where you. Ladies had two quick steals, two quick layups, and then they call timeout. They come, they come back down in offense. You know, you, you, you um, tap the ball out, and I see three yellow shirts, you know, three ladies from Steinsel on the floor grabbing that, you know, grabbing that loose ball. And I think, yeah, the hunger was just there for you guys. Of course, it, yeah. ended, with, um, it ended with, again, a great inside pass to the post for, for, for another basket. And, you know, just like that. In one and a half minutes, you were able to cut that 19-point lead down to 13. Yeah, I think like Coach said, in the halftime, he knew because we came back in a couple of games like that. We came back against um, Valfredange. We came back against Dudelange. We just didn't manage to finish it as a winner. But it doesn't matter. Actually, there was always that what we were working on during the preseason and the whole season to come there. And we knew that this one game will come where we will have to to take the lead after a comeback. And that was this game, actually. And, um, and I love his trust in us. I love the trust he has in us and the confidence he gives us um, because that com that's also a major point in basketball. If coach trusts you and coach knows what you can and what you are able for, I think that's um, making a big difference. And of course, every hustle on the court was giving us more and more power to finish it strong and we were sweating because it was hot and everything but it was also sweat from from stress from really um knowing that there is going to be a fight for 40 minutes actually 45 this game because we went in overtime but there was every single possession every single ball you could fight for was so important every rebound every ball you could grab that was there was every time the little lead you're going to have or always the one basket that's going to lead you to the to the win and I, I, I love my team actually because it was no one gave up. Everybody was really fighting till the last second, till the till the bus from from the clock. And I think it was um it was yeah, it was like a final you won and you knew it was a do or die game and actually um you, yeah, really unexpected to be honest, like like because no one no one was counting with us in the league. Everybody was okay, they're a little bit the underdog. 
Um, but um, yeah, I think all the experience and all the work we did the last five, six years, I think everything showed um, where we're standing now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then and then you went to to Grangeboat, and uh, that was a different game. I mean, it was close at half. I mean, that that second quarter was really high level, uh, I think. And then in the third quarter, yeah, you ran away and never never got back. They never got back. Yeah, and Grangeboat, I think uh, not to forget, it was a Wednesday game, so it's during the week. Uh, we are not all professionals. Uh, people go to school, people go to work. Um, you're still working eight hours a day, and then you have to go and play like a final game, a do or die. You know, it's about only one game that can uh, lead you to the half finals. And um, I think, I think the the fact that we played so great against Ash. We just wanted to play the last 20 more minutes, but this time 40 minutes. And I think, mm -hmm. I think the fact that um, Grangeval played with two big ones, actually, um, with the foreign players, made us life a little bit easier because we were able to match up better. And also, if we would switch, it wouldn't um, really put us in troubles. Uh, because of the size and uh, to be honest that was just a great night for us we just really played easy basketball great basketball movement um, in defense we were really communicative we talked a lot and I think that were the main the main um, points that really led us to to the to the victory actually the third quarter was uh, was amazing because till the last three four minutes I wasn't it wasn't happening a lot but then we really scored like 16 points in just a couple of minutes. And I think that mm -hmm. crashed them badly. And um, it was for us that we knew that we will have still 10 minutes hard, like hard 10 minutes in the fourth quarter. Because like I said, basketball is basketball. You can yeah. never, never underestimate somebody. Like you can come back easily. And uh, we knew that. We knew that. And actually, I'm, I'm so proud of my team, how we handled it and how we were able to, to keep our calm and to play basketball and not focus on anything else, not the refs, not on our uh, lost ball, but still on the focus on the court and play great basketball. And I think it was well-deserved for, for mm -hmm. my team because um, I, I never have seen a, a team dominating like this for 40 minutes uh, this season. Actually, you said two things earlier that I want to go back to. First of all, you said that... Um, did, this was a culmination or you know, this was a totality of everything that you guys have been working for for the past four years, all right? Um, how did you see your role change in Steinzel over the, over the course of the last four, four years that you, you've been there? Well, when I came there, I was really young. Actually, I was the youngest one in the team. And uh, so I had always Liz and Erica Morrow and they were really my, my people I was looking up and uh, especially Erica Morrow, she had such such a great mindset, such a great knowledge from basketball and also as a human. And a lot of people underestimate her as a human, but when you know her personally, she can give you so much um, for your life. And uh, as well, uh, Lee Schmitz, my teammate and my good friend now, we, we're still talking a lot. And I think they, they made me be stronger and they made me really grow as a person on and off the court, they really um, taught me how to be the leader. They taught me how to take over responsibility. And they really put me a lot in scene during the games to make me shine. And um, yeah, it was, it was now, now, now I'm pretty much by myself with um, two teammates that um, have been with me. And uh, actually we are now the old ones. And um, it's, it's, it's our time now to, to show our, our young ones how, how it's working and how they can um, enter our paths because uh, we can't forget that maybe we'll also create families one day and then they have to take over mm -hmm. because we won't maybe play uh, 10 more years or 12 years. So uh, my role is really to give them a lot on their way, like I said, on and off the court because for me in Luxembourg, it's very important to be also a good person off the court and um, know also to... Um, yeah, to respect everything that's around and all, all the people that work for the club. And I'm trying to give this to my team. And uh, on the court, when I have to take over the responsibility to help my team, that's my job now. And I'm doing my best to work on myself um, harder and harder to, to make this happen and to especially be there for my team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in that Ash game, uh, Coach Terry had the ball in your hands for quite, you know, almost like every every two possessions, you, there was always you running the show, make creating for your team. Um, one thing though, coming back from a 19 point deficit and then 
gaining gaining a six or seven point lead with two minutes left in the game, and they hit two wide open threes, and then suddenly that lead is cut down to one or two, and then two free throws. You know, it usually when you come back from such a huge deficit, your mentality is uh, you, you get drained. But he came out smoking in, in overtime. Like he started the fourth quarter with you having six straight points. Overtime count comes again another Esmeralda three. You know, so like, where, where was there extra motivation for the team going on with, with everything else going around? Well, to be honest, I'm, I'm a little bit speechless when I think about this game because I still can't really realize what happened there because, um, yeah, our point guard actually um, had five fouls. She had to um, go out of the court. And, um, well, when I was younger, I used to play point guard, but it was different. I was taller than all the other ones. I was a little bit physically stronger, so it was easy to play point guard. But now it's not anymore my position. I'm not anymore really on that spot. And, um yeah, I had to do it. I had to take over responsibility, so I'll do it. That was that was the goal. And I was like, okay, if I can um, bring the ball up, I'm going to put my players in scene. And I knew we're so close. And, uh, yeah, actually, you lose one of your foreign players. But, um, again, I have trust in my teammates. I know they work hard during the week. I know they deserve to be on the court. So my main point was... Um, to put them in scene, but um, I, I knew that I had really to step up because I just had four points in the halftime and I knew my, name, my team needs me, they need me. And I, I was just thinking clear-wise, I was just, okay, you know what? Set your mind back, set your mind to like peace and go on the court, play easy basketball. Don't do crazy stuff, just easy things. Everything defense gives you, use it, do something out of it. And that's what happened the last the last fourth quarter and then in overtime immediately the three-point shot I was really confident because we came back and and really my heart told me you know what just play basketball if you feel to shoot it just shoot it because you're gonna make it and in this moment my mind was so clear that I felt I felt like I have to take this shot because my team needs me and actually this three-point shot was really important and uh yeah I I just felt super great Christoph? yeah I mean you talked before about Erica Morrow, but um, you played also with other like really highly decorated and highly professional, uh, high, high, high level professional players, uh, Yvonne Anderson, for example. Uh, how, how much does it bring to you uh, to play with such, uh, such great personalities and such uh, excellent basketball players? I am grateful for that. I am grateful that we have um, two foreign players that come from different um, leagues, that come from a different country, from, um, you know, I'm always saying it's about mentality, you know. You can grow up in different countries and have a great mentality, and everybody has a different uh, mentality. Um, some people see basketball for fun, some to have, you know, family, because it's a spot where you spend so much time and be, and for me, it's a family. But for me, it's not going at practice and just be there to be there and do sports. No, for me, it's really like my passion. I really love it. And, and um, yeah, so to have the opportunity to play with players that have been at college, that had great coaches, um, that really went through a, through, a, through a way to make it to, make it to be professional, um, for me, there is a story behind. And I always, I always love to learn from them. And especially, like I said, Erica, it's... I knew I knew she had such a great knowledge from basketball that she was able to teach me how to play basketball without making myself really tired, but just by mm -hmm. reading the game. And that that's the difference in how I play now. Because usually I was, I'm still giving 100%, but I was giving 100%, but also physically um, flying on the court, jumping on every ball. Now if I know, okay, I can't get this ball, it's, it's almost out. I'm not jumping anymore on it. So I, I preserve myself a little bit of rest um, without jumping on that ball. And I think this is these small things that I learned during over months and months, during years and years now. Um, and I'm just, I'm just thankful and grateful for, for having this opportunity to play with such great players. Okay, great. Um, you know, getting 10 rebounds in a game is pretty tiring. <laughs> but you do it on a regular basis. You're like, you have, a, you have this awesome nose for the ball. Every time I look at the boxers, okay, 10, 15, 16, wow. All right, so 
Um, rebounding, how important do you feel it is in basketball? And what, what is, is something you prepare for? Is it something that you, you study? Is it something you just look forward? I'm going to get that ball. Well, for me, uh, it was always a study, actually, and it and still is. So at practice, when my teammates shoot, I'm trying to follow the ball, where the ball is going. And at some point after years, you can feel where the ball is going to fall pretty much. So you know how the ball it is going in, it is going to bounce somebody out. Of, but you got you to gotta know from where the ball is flying, and you got to read where it's going to probably fall. So I'm already like positioning myself to be able to rebound that's first second what i'm doing is working against my defender to really push him out and really do a great box out to be able to have some space to jump into the ball and get it third thing the timing is really important so when the ball falls down it's important to know how how high can i jump to get this ball so actually it was it was a thing you're practicing on but it's something you got to read a lot and um for me rebounding during the games that's one of the most important things in basketball when you get when you can get a rebound and you can push the ball and have a fast break an easy basket i think there is no easier way to win a basketball game and every single rebound you can get and the team doesn't get a second offensive rebound and then a second chance to shoot, I think you take them always some points away because that's always an opportunity for them to score again. But if you grab the rebound, you're always the winner in this one. And you always have then the offensive possession. And I think that's something um, that in basketball um, we are missing a little bit because sometimes we underestimate the rebounds but against ash for example we knew that every single rebound in overtime was giving us the opportunity to score on the other side and um that's really important and for me yeah having having um, such big numbers in rebounding that's what i always said if i can help my team by rebounding and having 20 rebounds a game and zero points i'm gonna do that i'm fine with it if i can help them with that and they need me on that spot i'll do it so that was always my mindset. If I can really do this job and they are happy and the other ones will score, I'm good with it. Okay. Well, but most of the time you also guard the opponents, one of the opponent's best players. So like how much does that take out of you physically having to do stuff and then having to play defense, two-way basketball, basically. You know, sometimes some, co so, some players would hide or some coaches would hide their best players on the defensive side to so make sure that they have – uh, enough firepower on offense but for you it seems like watching past two three games it was like every game was you, there was joy in what they, whatever it is you were doing shutting down an opponent yeah uh, first thing I'm really happy my um, coaches trust me um, in my defensive skills and my offensive skills and I think uh, the way I'm working in practice and showing that um, physically and conditionally I'm ready to play a 40-minute game on a high level um, as well as on defense as on offense um, makes them put me on a foreign player to, um, yeah, especially because of the physical appearance that I have because usually um, in Luxembourg uh, we don't have um, Luxembourg players that are physically that strong. And we usually put foreigners on foreigners because they are used to play because of college and everything. Um, and I think to get this responsibility, i um, so happy because it makes me grow as a person. It makes, me, it makes me sometimes find some little spots where I'm weak, my weakness spot, and I can work on it. And um, I'm really thankful for that. And um, like I said, I, I'm, I'm happy my coaches trust me on the defensive um, side and offensive side. And it's it's of course it's a it's a it's a two 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 man game like you know you gotta play on this side and then you gotta go back in offense and be still one hundred percent for your team and be able to score and I think that's what I learned during the last um, few years it's to to know to listen to your body and to use your um, brief to to handle yourself and be able to play during forty minutes yeah. Yeah, so, so now you're going to play T71 in the semis, uh, which is, uh, I guess, one of the tallest teams in the league. So how, how are you going to address this? Uh, you, you need to get even more, more physical and more, more rebounds to, to have a chance to beat them? Well, actually, I think, uh, like I said, we, we managed to um, come back last time and we just lost by eight points. Um, it was a home game. And uh, I think we, we again entered the semifinals uh, yeah, with with yeah being the underdog actually, but we don't have anything to lose again. And I think 
in a series of uh, best of three, there everything is possible. And uh, we showed these last two games that we can play basketball, that we can play defense, that we can keep teams under 70 points. And I think it's a very important um, for us to enter these semifinals with confidence um, and knowing that we are able to maybe surprise them. Um, of course, they are a big team. Uh, we use not to play that big teams like Dudonche. Um, they are really tall. And of course, every rebound will be important in this game. Every single rebound, every single box out, every single ball possessions we can have is going to be, um, yeah, it's going to be in our favor because, to be honest, um, Dudonche for me is really the leader in this league. Um, they have a really great team. They, they really have great players. Um, Basketball-wise, they play great, great together. They have a great chemistry. And I think we just have to enter this game with full of confidence and um, being just confident in our game and knowing that easy basketball will um, bring us um, to a close game. And then whatever happens at the end, we still have to be proud of ourselves from all the way we did. Mm -hmm. Um, you mentioned earlier that it, you, um, you found it great that you were able to play with players from different backgrounds and different nationalities, some who played uh, in schools or some who played in other leagues. Was this something that never, um, never crossed your mind earlier on in your career? Like, maybe I'm good enough to go play college basketball or maybe I'm good enough now to look at other situations abroad. Well, actually, uh... I'm, uh, I'm half and half, so I'm half Bosnian and half Luxembourgish. So uh, when I was 18, I got the opportunity to play for the Bosnian national team. And for me, that was an amazing experience. And my dream was always to be a pro basketball player. And um, as my mom uh, was uh, by herself with my brother and, and me, mm -hmm. it was difficult for me to leave my mom because she had sh some health issues. And actually, I wasn't able to leave the country knowing I'm going to leave my mom a little bit with a, a broken heart. And, um, you know, as a mom, when you have a daughter who is doing a lot at home and helping out, it's tough if you lose, if you kind of lose, like for good, a good reason, your daughter, it's hard. But I wasn't able to do that. You know, my mom is really my queen and I will do everything for her. And actually, I... I still get and I, I always got offers from, from other countries, um, especially France, um, Spain and Germany. Um, I really got a lot of offers and I got two offers from college going there. But then actually the way, because um, I was working already, um, then um, there is a rule if you have salary, you can't go with the scholarship mm -hmm. yeah. in the States to the, yeah. So that was really tough for me to um, pay all by myself and not get the scholarship and so that option like was yeah quickly quickly decided to not go there and um yeah one of my dreams kind of broke uh when i had to take this decision but again you have priorities in life and i think my mom is the one who grew me up and gave me this opportunity to live and to have a great life and now i'm the one who want to take care of my mom and um yeah, I'm playing here basketball and every year there come some offers and I'm always looking up for, for something. But yeah, um, to be honest, I, I created my life here. I'm paying an apartment. Um, it's not easy to just leave a couple of thousands euros you're earning every month um, from your job to maybe go and play somewhere abroad for only, yeah, um, hundreds of euros. And uh, I really would love to do this experience and maybe it will come... Um, in one or two years, who knows? I'm still in contact with a lot of agents and talking a lot, and um, we never know which opportunities will come. Uh, I did some mm -hmm. great games um, this last um, few weeks, and maybe my stats will impress them, and who knows what will come up, and uh, maybe a, a surprise uh, will come someday. So what, what would be your, your, your dream destination to play? I mean, do you have a, a club that you really adore? Uh, that you would like to play for or wh where do you see your level basically when you would play abroad? Uh, I really like um, French basketball. Um, I really appreciate that basketball is just um, a different basketball style and um, I feel like I fit in their style. But to be honest, if I would, if I would have a really great opportunity, I would love to play for Turkish league. They're just, they're just amazing. I think yeah, they support the team so much and everything. And 
um, pretty much often in the Euro League and they're competing on a high level and just to be with them because of this atmosphere I think that would already make me so happy but um, yeah France is, is a country I really like and I, I would love to play for a team there I don't have really a favorite to play because if I would get this chance to be honest um, I wouldn't care which team it is because you know if this team would like to have me I know that they're interested in me because of 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 me like personally and but yeah true and yeah I mean I take what life gives me that's all. Another yes. another thing to to that, that could uh, bring you on the map is playing for the Luxembourg national team, but you didn't do it so far. Or am I wrong? What what can you can give a little bit more background <laughs> on that? I haven't done it so far, true, but now I am actually. I I started to practice with them in July June. Um, so now all the papers are done, um, everything is done and I can compete for the uh, national team of Luxembourg and I am really happy about this. Finally, finally, um, with my uh, passport and nationality, I am able to compete for them. And uh, of course, it's always something different. I can play with um, some players usually that are my opponents and now I can play with them in a team. and. I just love the, the national uh, competition. It's just something different. It's a different, um, it's a different level. It's a different mindset. And you play for your country where you grew up. And I think it's just playing with heart. And that, that, that makes a lot. It's just such a big difference of a team. And um, yeah, you're playing for your nation. And I think um, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very impatient to, to play this uh, yeah, next month with the national team and prepare for the games. Yeah. Well, I'm really happy for you that you get you get to have this opportunity now. Um, you know, it's 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 a great it's a great thing for me. I mean, you're one of obviously one of the best players that we have in the domestic league. Um, there's this ranking system going on where it shows that you're in the top five of um of the league. How does that make you feel? I mean, is it something that you you look forward to, or is it something you want you want to compete for, or is it just something that uh, what if, if it happens, it happens? It, I'm more all of, I'm more for the team um you know what's best for the team stuff i am honest this mvp race it's okay for me to be there in there um you're always happy if you see your name appear there then you know that you're doing something great but it's not the most important thing because actually uh, i don't i don't really like the way they are looking to 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 choose the mvp from the league um just um the one who has the most of points for me it's not the one who is leading his team or maybe being the leader in the MVP. Um, I have double ditches in, uh, in points and rebounds. And um, I, actually, I don't mind. I don't mind. But um, it's always great for, for, for self-confidence. Um, you're showing you're doing a great job over the last years being in this race. It's always great. But um, I, I know I'm helping my team on a different level. I'm helping my team in different things. And this is making me more proud than being in this list and um, showing, uh, having my name on it. Of course, like I said, it's always this little one thing that helps you having confidence and knowing that you're doing mm -hmm. a great job and having great stats. But still, it's not the one thing that's going to make me win uh, the games by myself or winning the championship by myself. Not at all. It's a, it's a team sport and I'm always being a, a team teammate to my, to my team and and that's the most important thing for me. Is there a specific matchup that you enjoy um, playing? Or is there a specific person that you enjoy matching up against in, in, in the women's league? Well, uh, in the women's league is, uh, is tough because uh, actually the teams usually stay pretty much the same and uh, you usually play the same players. And to be honest, over the last um, few years, I never played a lot against the same person because, um, yeah, I, I, I got the chance to change up and, yeah, um, take over the, the foreign players. So it was something different for me. But, um, yeah, I really like to, to play, um, to play a hard defense. And, yeah, there is not, there is not a specific um, mm -hmm. player I like to play against because they are all different. They are all having something um, special and I, I, I like to prepare myself every week for the opponent who's coming and for the player I'm a guard to know um, what I have to work on and that's it yeah so you're not looking at the other team and saying oh I'm dropping 30 tonight 
I'm just joking. Nah, not, 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 that, <laughs> not, not that much. But I'm, I'm look. I'm looking a lot on the other team. I I learned. I learned, like I said, from Erica a lot to watch the other ones to pretty much, um, yeah, learn they learn they basketball style in, yeah, a couple of hours, weeks, um, days to to see how they play and to to already know what's gonna probably happen in the game to anticipate maybe a pass maybe a drive or something to be able to be already in the in uh in these lines and set set my set my defense and my feet right way um and i think that's that's already so important if you can have this in in basketball and uh of course it's again uh, taking your time away during your free time because you do it most of the time in the free time but if you love basketball if uh, it's your passion if you work uh, really for it i think um that's the way you can grow you can grow as a player Christoph, uh anything else yeah, I mean, um, women's basketball in, in general in Luxembourg, but also in other countries, is not really at the top of the media. Um, and if if it is, I mean, this year there were discussions about uh, Grangeval playing in the Euro Cup or adding uh, third professional. These kind of discussions uh, are are somehow related, but the game itself is not really talked about that much. Um, what what are your thoughts about that, and what what could be done to to change it? Actually, I'm really sad about it, to be honest, because I feel like our game against Ash was so impressive that it was even better than some men's games and also the, the quality of the game and also the, the, the players that gave everything. Uh, I, I, just, I, I just was sad to see that there were just maybe two, three articles about us and in the news and it was like, uh, we did a surprise. Okay, but... You know, there could be some maybe video clips. There could be maybe a highlight video of just just the, the whole game. You know, and not not player by player. But for me, I was just a little bit sad because I was like, wow, we we did such a great basketball game, and we could show it to the Luxembourgish people to maybe have more players being interested in basketball, and we're not using these kind of games to do it. And um, yeah, um, to be honest, it's it's always like most of the time it's like the men's team, the men's team, the men's team. But some clubs are living from their women's team. Some clubs are living from the championship that the women's bring. Some clubs are, are living because the women's team bring um, the cup titles at home and not because of the men's team being so good or just being there somewhere in the first league. And um, yeah, it's most of the time with the women's team, is this, there are some discussions about, yeah, like you said, Gringovald, um or uh, yeah, whatever. Just bad stuff. It's it's most of the time is like yeah, having having a, a bad advertising about women's basketball. And uh, we know that we need players. We know that we need more young players starting the sports to take over um, the women's teams. And uh, it's not the right way to do it. And for me, if we would do more advertising um, for basketball. Um, and um, having having more video clips, having more articles about players, more about teams, it would make it much more easier to um, to yeah to find young players' uh, motivation in basketball. And uh, I think we we just need to to have better better advertising for women's basketball and just show it much more on the social medias. And um, yeah, advertise for them and encourage them and support them in everything they do because it's also our free time that we are using and and doing um, sports in it. And I think it's it's the right way to show that also we can compete on a high level as the men's team do as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, I, I fully agree. And let me just say I love the honesty. Um, secondly, yeah, I agree with the, with the video clips. And I, I was actually before we were before we went. Um, in this conversation, I was already cutting up some of the Ash game um, to intersplice with, uh, with with this conversation. But yeah, you touched on a lot of great things, and these are points that uh, Anne Simon as well mentioned when we spoke to her. And you know, like Christoph and I also talked about after that episode, we were like, we are part of it because we also focus on on the on the men's league so much. Um, however, with with how RTL has done it with the uh, with the uh, arena cameras or whatever they call it, that now that it allows a lot of people to be able to just go to go to their website and you know click on games and it's it's all there for um for everyone to see, which I think a really really nice thing that that they were able to do. Yeah, yeah, I I agree. It's it's I think it's one of the best investments they did to be honest because 
it's uh, now with corona okay we are all happy to be able to have it but i think also just in some hard times when you can't leave home and you have these spores and you can also re-watch it um as there is a replay i think it's just so awesome to and to be honest as a player to see yourself on tv is already great even if it's only luxembourg but still if you send this link to your um i, I don't know to your players family, family that, yeah. that are living abroad and you send them the link and you know they're going to watch you on tv that's that's still that's that's showing that that you can like yeah feel proud of yourself to be on this and i think that was a great great investment and also to put the men's and women's team on the on the same level and allow both to to be um to be online that that's really great all right christoph i know we had one other question for esmeralda right yeah i mean i was it was just going through my head where when i heard you talking um I hear coach talking here. So is that something that you 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 have a plan for the future when you stop playing to, to become a coach? Of course. I mean, there is no doubt I never would um, be a coach. For me, uh, it's very important to have um, a coach you can look up and see like an idol in it. And for me, I think I could be this type of person. And um, like I said, it's, it's a lot about little basic. If you have a coach that can teach you in a young age how to grow as a person, how to work hard, um, what it means to work every day, hours and hours, hours and hours, to be a great player, to come where you want because nothing is going to fall in your hands. Um, I think um, it's going to make me great as a person because I can give something to somebody just by talking, just by giving some experience to someone. And on the other side, um, basketball is life. And um, I never could just stop from one day to another and be like on my couch and just watching TV and relax down. I need to be in this gym. I need to teach um, young players to play basketball. I want to give them something on, on them way. And that's for sure something I'm going to do. I don't know when, to be honest, because I plan on playing basketball for 10 more years. And um so I don't know when, but for sure I'm going to take over a young team. And um, yeah, once in my life, I want to be uh, a coach from a, from a, yeah, from a women's um, top team and try to reach uh, some championship titles or cup titles. But at least what I want to do is teach the young ones the basics. And like I said, responsibility, be a leader, knowing how to live and take decisions in life. That's my most important thing I want to teach them. So, you, so you future, mentioned... future national team head coach, Esmeralda. <laughs> I like that. I like the sound of that. Now you, you mentioned in, in the very beginning that uh, basically um, there was, the, when you went to your first basketball practice, there was this coach telling you, hey, you have to stay here. You stay playing basketball. Do you remember who that coach is? Yeah, it was uh, Jacques Steinmetz. And uh, yeah, actually, it was it was so fun because they talked to me about Michael Jordan, about Kobe Bryant, about he and there, and I was just looking at them. I was like, "Who mm -hmm. are these players? Like, who are you talking about? I don't know them." I went home, I went on YouTube, and I was like, "Oh my God! Okay, okay, yo, these players are really tough." And that's actually where I started to, yeah, to, to. Uh, yeah, put some interest into basketball in my life and started actually uh, to, to right. grow into this sports. Good job, Jeff. We appreciate <laughs> what you've done for Luxembourg basketball. <laughs> yeah, All I right. had to mention his name, but he was it too. Hey, I mean, if, if, if a player years from now remembers your name and, and how, how he made or how that, how that coach made you feel as a player, and you know that means that coach did a really great job. So kudos to Jeff. You know, <laughs> right, Christoph? You agree with that, right? Yeah, I agree. Okay. I agree. <laughs> Christoph, anything to uh, to wrap up? I think uh, we touched a lot of interesting uh, topics, uh, and um, I mean, what is, what is key now is uh, I think you have a game. You have a game coming up, and um, we wish you all the best for that game to to continue your run, and then. Uh, hopefully also see you with the national team and maybe in a professional league in the future. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you a lot. I appreciate I mean, it. For me, uh, uh, first of all, really appreciate it. Um, it was short timing, but when, when I reached out to you, you were just like, okay, we, we, let's do this. And it was, it's really great. And I think secondly, that 
a lot of young people, not just players, if they, if I don't want to say if they watch this or when they watch this because we really don't have a lot of people watching at the moment. But hopefully, if they do and when they do, they they get to learn something out of it about you know about about passion, about dedication, and about responsibility. You mentioned a lot of things that basketball players take for granted. Um, you know, hard work, how how you work, not just how hard you work, and and the basics, how important they are. And learning from teammates, and, and you know, it's it's such a great thing. And I just want them for for them to be able to, I don't know, maybe look up this video and say, oh, okay, well, wow, yeah, because I was wowed, and I appreciate the time that um, that you gave us to to come on here and talk to us. Thank you, thank you a lot. I appreciate. It. I'm just I'm just honest in what I say, and that was all honesty I was saying. And for me, it's like you said, it's about basic things. It's about life and you, you, you play basketball or sports, any sports you would do, but a lot of basic and respect is involved in that and you can just grow as a human if you work hard. And I mean, that's, that's in, every, in every single thing in life. You have to work hard to, to come on a high level and uh, I just appreciate you reached out to me and I was able to talk a little bit about my experience and how I see um, life and basketball and um, yeah, to have my thoughts. That's great. Thank you a lot. Hey, hopefully we get to talk to you again after all this is over when you're in a deeper playoff run, you know? Of course, of course. I'm always there. You know how to reach to me. Okay, so thank you, Esmeralda. Um, it was really, really nice talking to you. And we wish you well. Wish you good luck for, for the next series of games, okay? Thank you. All right. All right. Wow, that was impressive. I was impressed. Yeah, yes. It was a very interesting, uh, very interesting talk. I mean... Esmeralda, she has a lot of things to talk about. Uh, she has opinions about about things, and uh, in addition to that, she's also a very good basketball player and uh, one of the the key the key players of her team, of the league, and uh, maybe up for another championship run. We're gonna see. Mm -hmm. I mean, they they're facing Catherine Bessis and um, the young point guard from T seventy one and T seventy one. In the best of three semifinal, if you were to choose, like if you were to look at it stats wise, who's the, who has the upper hand here, or is is Steinsel still uh, the underdog in this matchup? Yes, they are. I mean, uh, even if uh, they have uh, won several titles a few years ago, uh, but it's a different team now. Uh, while T seventy one was running up front. Uh, the whole year and uh, they have uh, the, the favorite role in, in this game. Uh, they have a very strong lineup, uh, very experienced players uh, and uh, a bright young, young guard uh, that uh, is the spearhead of, of their offense. So it should become a very exciting semifinals uh, on this side of the bracket. True. And, you know, for everyone out there who wants to watch um, the games, both of the women's team, um, women's league and the men's league, um, they can always just go. Highly to, recommended, you know, by the way. Yes, highly recommended to go to rtl.lu. Uh, RTL and you know, they, they, it's all games are there. And it's, I think it was a really, really great thing for RTL to do. There were questions in the beginning if it was something that was work, going to work or whatever. But, hey, if you're doing nothing and you're watching a game, then you know, one thing, though, um, Esmeralda did say this, and I, I don't know if I agreed or if I said something um, during the interview. But I told this to you earlier before we began the podcast um, that that was one of the best games I've watched this season, um, men's team or women's team. That was that that Esh versus um, Steinsel game that got them into the play-in game was one of the best games I've watched, and bar none. I was able to watch that because of the RTL link. Yes. I still have to do that. <laughs> I, I haven't watched it yet, but uh, after hearing you talk about it, after hearing Esmeralda talk about it, I, I think I have to do that uh, in order to, to see, see this game and also maybe learn something from, from what you see there and um, yeah, get excited for the next, uh, next games ahead. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we can get some more um, personalities from, from the Women's League to, to come on the podcast. Uh, I don't know. We mentioned uh, RTL like five times already. They're not our new sponsors. Okay, just to be sure. Not yet, Everyone understands. Not, not yet. Not yet. But maybe someday. All right. Well, 
um, Christoph, I know you're going to have, well, you don't really have a busy weekend, you know, because the game was canceled for you guys, but... Um, no, we play. We oh, you play. have a game. You have a game on Saturday. Yeah. Our game on Wednesday was canceled against oh, yeah. E71, but we, we have to play on Saturday in Sparta, which is a, a tough one. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I'm going to let you go so you can start prepping for, for, for your practice this evening. So, again, uh, on behalf of Coach Christoph Nye, this is Coach Nigel Tolentino saying thank you very much for, uh, for staying with us. And hopefully you guys learned a lot from Esmeralda. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.